another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your host, Spicy Mari, and I have a fun little treat in store for you today. My co-host, Dorinda Barker, is joining in the studio to talk about everything spicy when it comes to online dating and how to improve your relationship. Welcome, Dorinda. Well, thank you. Okay, so Dorinda's like another face that you might <laughs> recognize because we've worked together all the time when it comes to The Spicy Life. When I have clients that come in that are in need of uh, redoing their photos, their online profile on these apps and their dating profiles looks like blah. And I always say that like your LinkedIn yeah. profile should mirror your dating profile. It needs to, they need to be just as clean and professional and spicy as possible. I, yeah, I do agree on that. Yes. Because if you, it's, I always think of profiles, dating profiles as a resume. So in a resume, are you going to send out a crappy resume? No, or? you are not. <laughs> so you need to look your best because it's a job. You got to think of it as a job. And if the, the better you look, the more you're going to get a job. Absolutely. Yeah. So like I always lean on you when it comes to, I have a client that comes in and you've been running a uh, business for a while now called Next Connection. Yes. You run your own actual site for dating profiles yes. where you, you know, offer uh, clients that come in packages. I saw this as a resource. And one thing that we are here over at the spicy life is all about like female empowerment, helping other startup businesses. And so when I saw like, Oh, this is a service that I could actually use and benefit for, from my clients. I reached out to you. Like we need to partner. We're in the same industry. We're both in relationships. We need to start consulting with each other because yes. I have the coaching to help them when it comes to getting uh, the person to, you know, see their best qualities and help them fall in love. You have the skill set when it comes to how to actually even get them to that date because their profiles may not present themselves the best. Oh yeah. And that's, and that's the whole thing with, uh, dating online, it's become, it's the go-to now for dating. Absolutely. I would say, I mean, 10 years ago, you wouldn't think about it and people would have, um, the word I'm thinking, like poo poo on it. Like <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Okay, Rudy Poo, Poo Poo. <laughs> and they weren't like happy about like, oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Now those same people are coming to me and I'm doing those profiles. And even people who are like, oh, I'm to this, I'm to that, blah, blah, blah. They're now doing dating profiles. Oh, no, it's it, that has become yeah. the norm. And when I was looking up, you know, how much I should be pushing my clients to going online when it comes to dating, yeah. I use those resources when it comes to helping them find someone. And when they're opposed to it, because they're like, oh, I'm traditional, I just want to run into this person at the park, or I just want to meet them at the grocery store. It doesn't really happen like that. Like you're going to be waiting no. a long time if you expect this person who's extremely successful to be taking a walk in the park at the same time as you. Yeah. And I, you're hoping those elements <laughs> combine. This is not a Hallmark movie. Right. This is not Hallmark. <laughs> I love Hallmark movies. Don't get me wrong, but this is not a Hallmark movie. And we're in a society today where we are busy. We are constantly working. I don't think I know anybody who's just taking walks in the park as much anymore or in the grocery aisle. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm so busy. I can't even buy groceries anymore. Oh, yeah. We're ordering on Amazon. Exactly. Amazon. Um, Whole Post Foods, yeah. Postmates. I did that today for my coffee. And oh. so, <laughs> so, I mean, with everything, unless it's the Postmates delivery guy, maybe he's my kismet, but I don't, I'm not really meeting people unless I'm meeting them online or through friends, but even then you're not really meeting people anymore, even through friends, because and let's people, face it. People are skeptical because they're calling it, you know, this online dating, a dating, I don't want to date online. You're not dating online, no. you're meeting online. You're just taking yes. care of one little need within your life or within your day mm -hmm. that helps you connect with someone through this tool. And so when it comes to, you know, creating an online profile, I want you to give us some some or tips or the, you know, of the trade. I'm going to yes. ask you some questions because I always play the or game when it comes to the beginning of the spicy life. And today, since we're getting all this online profile expert advice from an online profile expert herself, Dorinda, we're going to play the or game so that people know what you're in favor of. Okay. Okay. So number one, <laughs> and this is online websites, match or okay. Cupid. Okay. Cupid. Dating apps, Bumble or hinge. Bumble. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> um, that was a hard one, by the way. I know because that like was a, really yeah. Good I ones. like both of them. Uh, swimsuit photos in your dating profiles or not? Not. Ooh. Okay. Selfies or Snapchat photos from Snap that you put in your profile? 
you know, the little bunny so, ears. And like, <laughs> uh, selfies. If you had to choose. Okay. If I had to choose, <laughs> selfies. Okay, filters or natural? Natural as possible. As natural as possible, okay. Mm. So those were some of uh, Dorinda's ores when she's, you know, going to people's profiles. She's looking mm. at some of the mess that they've created when it comes to their <laughs> representation. <laughs> And she's telling you, okay, these are the tools that you want and this is what we need to do to change these. And what a lot of people don't know is that because people are going to these profiles, photos are so important, but not what you think is beautiful. It's what naturally the human eye is gonna gravitate to. So when it comes to taking photos, you actually will take their photos for them and yes. do photo shoots. Yes, I will do photo shoots. I will take photos for them. Even if they're on the go, I, I like to make people feel comfortable. So I don't try to do headshotty photos. I'm not a big headshot person because you want to look as possible. It's great. And I always will take a photo with you smiling. So I think that's something people need to see. Yes, smile. Something please. you need to see. And definitely no photos with sunglasses. But Oh my gosh. Oh I, I see another oh, sunglass photo. Five worse. sunglass photos in your pictures. I watch my clients as they're swiping because I want to yeah. make sure they're doing it correctly. They will not, they will swipe left on someone who has sunglasses because they're like, I can't see their eyes. I, yeah. I don't know what they really look like. And it's true. If you can't see someone's eyes, then why would you even bother? That means you're not A, paying attention at all if you swipe right on them because who knows, but some people got dead eyes, some people got crazy mm -hmm. eyes, some have sweet eyes, warm eyes, and you have to look at that because I think a lot of times besides a smile is also their eyes. You can tell a little bit about a person. Yeah. You know, so many times my girlfriends will even look at my profiles and they'll go through, oh no, no. You look at, <laughs> oh no, there's something behind there. You can tell, and it's all because they're looking at their eyes. I mean, and you can tell if someone's a good time or someone's just, you're looking for something and could be something. And the, I really do feel, I know it's so cheesy and cliche-ish, but the windows, the eyes are the window to your soul. Oh my gosh, yes. And, and so I, I always, I used to laugh at it, but now from doing this, it's so true. If somebody decides so tomorrow they're gonna go redo their page on their own. They're going to try to um, get these images that are more warm and friendly, more inviting. What should they be wearing? Oh, basically what I always think is, you know, nothing for women. Okay, women, I don't mind a little cleavage, but I don't need to see the V-neck down to your belly button. Ooh. So, you know, and to have them all propped up. Listen, I, I get it. I get them. I'm a woman who is of ample bosom. <laughs> As I, was I, as yes, I was trying to say it in a nice, polite way, <laughs> <laughs> but they don't need, that shouldn't be the first thing saying hello. Mm -hmm. That's the way I always feel. But something that shows a little something, yes, of course, but make it where it's sexy and sweet in its own sense mm -hmm. of like, this is me, because you don't want your body parts to be the first thing that people see. Like I'm a huge proponent of that. Now, with guys, I prefer you to have your shirt on. I get it. I get it. The gym selfie is like a thing, yes. but and, and I, it's annoying, but I get it. But you know what? We don't need to see your chest because in a great shirt, whether it be a Henley or even a good collar shirt or polo, we get to see what yeah. you look like. And it, you know what? Imagination is everything. Exactly. Leave something for us to wonder, for us to want more of. Yeah. When it comes to hats though, should guys be photographing in hats? Cause is, is hats covering up their hairline? Is it covering up, you know, their face? Is it creating shadows? Should they be photographing in so hats? So here's my take on hats. I don't mind a hat photo. It's when you are in a hat in every photo, because at least you believe where's your hairline mm -hmm. and then and not that and by what the way men, what color is your hair and by the way men do not worry about your head, hairline that's honestly one of the last things women are thinking of and also you can shave your head and that's not and bald men are beautiful but i, I just baldy. exactly so i just <laughs> want to put that out there <laughs> and just to and also you i feel like with that there's some kind of insecurity that you have so one or one, I would say one picture or two pictures, but everything else, because you get a, the norm is about five to six pictures. Show everything about you, like show your head, show your eyes, show all that stuff. Don't hide anything. And one thing I like to tell women, especially, is um, colors, like yes. jewel colors, photograph really well, jewel tones. 
Yes. And so studies show even the color red ignites passion and yes. excitement. And so if a woman is photographed in red versus you know, any other color when she is taking a picture, men are more likely to choose her in the red photo than the other photos and not even in subconscious. They don't even know why they're doing that. But red is actually a really great, you know, color to photograph in. It makes oh, yeah. you more desirable on the eye. But just, but if you don't own red, like colors in general, as opposed to just like black and white t-shirts. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. Don't stick to the normal uniform of black and white. I agree with you 100% in every photo. I get it, like maybe one or two photos, but definitely spruce it up. I mean, just recently had a client, one of your clients actually, and he wore colors and the colors look so nice on him. Like oh, olive, I know exactly the what you're olive about. Yeah. tone was, I love <laughs> that olive shirt. And it's the same goes for men. It's not just for women. Spruce it up with colors. I honestly, blues look good on people who have blue eyes. Yeah. Like my eyes change color. So I, it's either like blue, gray, or green, mm -hmm. and depending on what I'm wearing. But I know what colors to wear for me that are going to show up good. And that's the other thing. Just go out and try things on to see what looks yeah. good for you. So what we think looks good on us sometimes doesn't. That's the other thing. That's why we have friends. And always use your friends to be able to help you on that. Should we be posting photos with our friends in it? I see a lot of profiles. Yeah. It's a group of girls. She's having a good time. It's a group of oh, guys yeah. are having a good time. Or sometimes they have male, female friends that they're taking photos with. Yeah. What do you feel about people being in the photos on your dating profile? Uh, I don't. I feel like that is a non-starter. And to be honest with you, when I started this whole whole dating apps for me just me personally i had a photo of a friend of mine and me in it well guess what i had a guy get in touch with me to ask me about my friend oh yeah so that yeah and it does and i no offense if you're already on these apps and you're doing this it doesn't make you feel good right. when somebody's asking you oh, about you a friend want me you yeah but you're oh yeah but you want to ask me about my friend I don't, here's my thing. There's, it's a very, it's not a slippery slope. The only thing I say is there was one guy, I did his profiles and he had a picture of him, his dad and his mom. Mm -hmm. And he was in his graduation, his, you know, uh, cap yeah. and gown. And that works for him. That's totally fine. But what I don't like is having you and your other friends. Listen, this is not a competition, but when you put your other friends in there, subconsciously it becomes a competition. And we start looking at not just your friends, yeah. but now we're like, hmm, other options over here. And sometimes when we swipe on your profile, we might not know if you happen to look like some of your friends, if you resemble somewhat, which one you are based on your main profile. There's five photos of you and all of them are friends. Which one are you in that profile? What about the, putting the opposite sex? Like if you have a female in the photo with you, you guys were at the beach and you took a great photo of yourself, but a female's in there or a male's in your photo. Should you still post that up there? I technically wouldn't. Because that's also showing you there's some, whether or not he, he could be your brother, you know, especially in like the same age range, mm -hmm. he'd be your brother. He can be your gay best friend. He could be whoever, anything, anything, but you know what? Someone's going to look at them and be like, Oh, why, why would you put someone else in there? Because on dating right. profiles, there are couples on there who are looking for some, a third person, like a thruple. This is what they call them. And, um, <laughs> Thruple. <laughs> Thruple. But, they, but they're actually put the other person in there and they say that on their profile that that's what they're looking for. But you don't know. And I just don't think, don't advertise somebody else. It goes back to the same with having a bunch of pe people in it. Advertise yourself. This is about you. It's about yeah. no one else. It is about you. I agree wholeheartedly mm -hmm. with that. <laughs> I also think that it makes you feel like too, what, is this an ex, you know, girlfriend or ex boyfriend? Is you know, is this uh, someone from your past? And yeah. I really am offended when I see people even blot out faces oh, I hate of that. friends or people that they took pictures with in order to post a photo of themselves. Just retake a new photo because yeah. clearly you don't care about the quality or you want to be you know blotching photos out. So yeah. take yourself a photo right now. The iPhone timer will time it, yeah. <laughs> and you can lean it to the side and take a new photo of yourself, as opposed to using old photos from 10 years ago with friends that you now have to blotch their faces out so it's not a distraction in your profile. Yeah, and it goes back to the resume. 
Just goes back to the resume. Would you do that on your resume? No, you wouldn't. Always ask yourself that question. Would I do this on my resume? And if the answer comes out to no, guess what? You're not doing it on your dating profile. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and since we're still talking about photos, give us a little tidbit on posting with your children. Oh, because this I, one is this like is my this is my pet peeve. And this is how I feel about it. children are wonderful. They are great and they are beautiful. But once again, they are meant not to be seen in this way. I don't want to see your first photo be you and your 10 kids because you know what? That's great. But you know what? Your kids don't need to be in your photos. This is just a beginning thing. This isn't like something six months down the line. Um, I see it all the time. There was this one guy who was, he looks, I, he was like my type. But every photo I went through, it was him and his two kids. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's great. You love your kids. But first of all, it shows me I'm ne I'm actually third or fourth, third or fourth. Which I'm you never going to. Yeah. And I'm OK with being second to children because children are it's they're the amazing and everything. But I don't want to be third or fourth or fifth. And the other thing is they're not getting to know your kids right away. You're getting to know the person. Right. So. They're not even gonna yeah. probably meet them for six months. So why, exactly. are you showing, why are you dangling these little carrot kids in front of me? Yeah, and the, it's the other thing about like, and, and not to go into celebrities, but celebrity, and I do agree with celebrities, my children are off limits. Guess what? Your children are off limits. Another thing, are you gonna talk all about your kids in your job interview? Right. Is Guess that the what? only thing you have to share? Because clearly from photos, that's what defines you. That's all you have to yeah. offer right now is your children. Great, they're the best thing about your life. But maybe you should just be focusing on them then yeah. if you are never by yourself or have any time to take a photo by yourself. Because this is this is your resume. This is what you are showing me yeah. about who you are, right? Exactly. Yeah. So when it comes to the photos too, I also think that I need to, like just in regards to kids, because people want to be upfront. They feel like, well, I'm doing them a disservice if I don't show that I have children because maybe it doesn't say that on the profile. Maybe, you know, um, it's not demonstrated. So I want to make sure that I put that in my photo so that they can see because my kids have to be accepted. To your point earlier about, I'm not even going to meet the yeah. kids. I'm going to meet you first. The other thing is this, this is online meeting. Yeah. We don't know if every single person who's swiping on you and your children is really who they say that they are. So from a safety yes. standpoint, you're exposing me who is coming on here to meet someone to potentially have sex with. You're, exposing me to little children who are underage minors. Now I'm making an assessment about you and an assessment about them at the same time. Hopefully I am who I say I claim to be, but now I know what your entire family looks like. Now I, it's a, there's a safety hazard that comes with it oh, too. Yeah. Yes, we have Facebook. Yes, we have Instagram, but we're not going to those particular platforms specifically looking for a mate. That's more relationship building and you have that private. When it comes to the online dating apps, it's 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 within seven mile radius, you know, whoever gets, you know, connected with you and matched oh, yeah. based on the algorithm. Yeah, and I to your part, your children, who knows? Someone can even take the picture of you and your kids, put it up somewhere else. You don't know. Your children should always be protected. And if you're protecting them by putting them out there, I I just don't agree with it. Once and also there could be a great woman. But if she sees you with your two kids and that's what you're pushing first and foremost, she's going to just swipe left on you. That's the other thing. And aren't you thinking, you know, the first, aren't you, aren't you wondering, well, hmm, where's his ex-wife in the picture or the yeah. mother of his children? What is their relationship? Now, now you start, stop thinking, you know, you start thinking about like all these other elements that are distractions from really, you know, who this great, amazing person may be. Now mm -hmm. you're thinking about the baggage and the drama that may be coming with him. And, you know, are they in a strange relationship? Are they doing well? Like, these are not thoughts that I should be thinking about when it comes to before I go out on a date with you. Let me get oh, to know yeah. those things about you. Mm -hmm. Let me and, ask yeah. you those questions. Yeah, and th those are things in the beginning you really don't need to get into. And you really only need to get into those things when you are starting to go on more than two dates, my personal opinion, or a few dates. If you think that this is going somewhere, then you get into all of that stuff. But it doesn't need to be that... Um, photo throw up of my kids, my kids, my kids. Okay, so I wanna give everybody a little bit more game then because, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I always say like who you are in person 
it's a, it's a safety, it's a safe zone when it comes to dating apps because, yeah. you know, we don't have to actually present our true self. We just have to present photos. We don't have to go up to the person. We don't have to have a real conversation. However, we do have to be amazing at messaging and texting. And so <laughs> our great qualities needs to transfer when it comes to, you know, our thumb fingers. However, easier said than done. And it's yes. hard to be charismatic in type. And it's hard, you know, you can't give your isms. You can't, you know, if, you, if there's a typo, we're judging you based on your grammar. So yeah. there's a, it's, you know, it's like writing an email at work. It, you know, it's a lot more challenging. It is. If you had an opportunity to say it in person, it would be interpreted so much differently. Oh, so much differently. That's why sometimes I wish these apps had a video recorder, <laughs> like, like a, a voice recorder. That's what I meant to say, like a voice recorder. So then they can hear the inflection of your voice. That's a good idea. Anything? We need to add voice notes. There you go. <laughs> we said it here first. We said it. We said it. <laughs> but what what should be the messaging process? Like, what should somebody's opener be? I like you. I swiped right. It was a match. What should be my first message to you? So this is what I this is what I say. First of all, bios are there for a reason. Mm -hmm. Bios are always there for a reason, and your pics too are there for a reason. So. I just had a client who matched with somebody and this woman, when he went to her Instagram, because some people attach their Instagrams to the dating profiles, right. which I'm starting to be up okay about because at first I wasn't okay about it, but now I'm starting. And she, every restaurant she went to, she took pictures of chopsticks. Okay. <laughs> she and like, and she, but she did like this nice picture and he was like, well, I'm just going to say, Hey. And I was like, no, you're not. This is what you're going to say. You're yeah. like, and you ask her a question about the chopsticks. You ask her about this and within not even a minute and a half, she was She's replying responding. back and a whole conversation started. And from there they went on a date and they they're dating. So, I mean, you look at certain things pay like attention to the pay, profile. Yeah. Always pay attention. You're going to pay attention to a woman on a date. So why not pay attention to what she has to say or what he has to say in their bios or in their pics? There's always something you can ask a question for. And it's a volley back and forth, by the way, because I do notice, and especially for me, is when I'm on these dating profiles, I'll ask a question and the guy will answer. And then it's like, okay. So be able to be back and forth with it because that's how you're getting to know happen? someone. Why does the ghosting happen? When you're messaging someone, you think you're hitting it off, you're getting excited, they said something witty, you said something witty back, and then they disappeared. I mean, I have actually been trying to figure this out because <laughs> it's even happened with me and ghosting. I think what happens is in, we make it so easy right now in a society to ghost, mm -hmm. to um, disappear. There's a you. phantom. Yeah. I, I just, I've been phantom. reading up. I've been reading up on all these things. We should do an episode on all the new words that are coming up with dating apps okay. because I'm I think that would be great. One. So phantom. <laughs> but I think people do all these things because it's easy. And plus there's a plethora of people. Yep. You and, it on the money. Yeah. There's a plethora of people. And so they're bouncing off with one, you know, a couple of people. But one person, I guess, fit the bill for them right. to go on a date. And then they just stopped talking to other people. Now, I am actually going to tell you, this is a true story. And this actually happened to me, too. Okay, and I was, so I, I was so <laughs> impressed by this guy. And I hope it worked out for him. But him and I were talking back and forth and everything. And then he... Uh, I didn't hear from him like a day or two. And he goes, oh, listen, I'm really sorry. I met someone. It seems to be working out. And I hope you find what you're looking for. You seem, you know, but it, he had the guts to, to say it, to, to say honest. it, just say, listen, I met someone else. I'm going to try it out with them. Some I, for a person like me is like, oh, great. Go for it. Like it, I'd rather you yes, find live, somebody happy. that's going to be in the, it's going to be right for you and go with that. I, sometimes you might not get that right person and it might tell you off for a few seconds, but guess what? It's just for a few seconds. You're gone. You're done. But I just say, hey, I met someone and I'm going to go in this direction. I'm totally fine with that. I just think people don't, ghosting is for people who are uncomfortable with telling someone the real truth. Right, with being honest and saying, hey, not that interested. 
Don't be afraid, spicy yeah. tip, to tell someone that you're not interested in them. It's perfectly okay. Yeah. You may think, oh, well, they're gonna experience rejection, and they are, but guess what? We need to get used to that and actually numb ourselves yeah. to it, <laughs> as opposed to you just disappearing, because disappearing is a form of rejection as well. However, there's no closure and there's no answer, and we think that maybe it's something that we did, or maybe, you know, it's, it's clear yeah. that the person's not interested, but I would like you to tell me that if, something happened, you know, did I do something or was it a situation that you got a better offer? You know, something better arose. Yeah. It's that simple, but we'll respect you more for giving us your truth as opposed to running away from it. It's about respect. I think at the end of the day, and I don't think people look at it that way, but I do. I really do think it's a big respect issue. And I think everyone should do that. So you mentioned earlier when it came to like how we have this conversation, how we started up, yeah. you know, mentioned something in their photos that is extremely, you know, interesting that stood out to you. Yeah. Uh, I always tell my clients to create spice breakers and those Ooh. are icebreakers, but they're spicier questions than the normal person would ask. Yeah. So some of my go-tos are usually if you could um, uh, travel back into the past what, you know, when, when would you travel and why? And, you know, relive this, you mm -hmm. know, this experience or, you know, what's the best gift you've ever received? Tell me your happiest memory, you know, that'll give you more insight into who that person is oh, yeah. as opposed to, oh my God, I love your hair or beautiful dress. You know, when you start off with messaging someone based on physical appearance, it automatically starts off with a superficial relationship. Oh yeah, and I, I've, I've done that too. And some, I get some great responses or what was the number one hit the year you were born? You know, <laughs> so that means people have to search and, people, and it becomes a thing. I actually, there was this girl, um, my friend Andre's one of her friends and he showed me this. This girl started a Connect Four with oh, her people. Cute. So they would go back and forth and I thought that is so interesting. Wait, I wanted to connect learned. four to me. How does that work? So it's um, basically it looked like the Connect Four game. Okay. And so I, she had it where I don't I don't know how she did it, but I watched it because I talked to her, and they would go back and forth, and they played Connect Four with each other. So it was like a virtual game. And she was able it, to put this. Into she was the dating into app? the dating app. She was able to do it, and it just to me that is so fun. Or you, there's so many. Like, things. I gotta see yeah. that acted out in person. I'm like, yeah, I, see I have how that to. I, I'll have to ask Andre about that. I'll ask Andre and see, and I'll get that for you. But it was one of the most interesting things I saw, and I was like, this girl had to get a lot of dates because if I was a guy, I would want to go on a date with her because I'm like, this is genius, yeah. and it also goes to show that you're clever, that you know you think outside the box, and it's I hate the hay. Oh hey, my gosh is as my grandmother would say is for horses so i mean it's not for it's good when you're calling a friend hey you know like what's up yeah when i'm calling spicy hey what's up what's that's up? great but when i am talking to someone for the first time that's not putting your best foot forward at all okay so one thing that they should know too that is like super simple that you actually observed while you were <laughs> listening or hopefully you observed it uh when i played with you with the or game earlier Yes. That is a great game for you to play. If you don't know what to say, you have to like just start off in conversation with the person. Like say, oh, that was my timer. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> which I'm actually restarting right now. If you don't know what to say to the person because, um, you know, the conversation uh, is, maybe you're just not the spiciest or interesting person, or maybe you we're having a conversation and it fell short, or maybe you just need an opener. If you do something as simple as the or game, which is just asking or questions, ketchup or mustard, go. Mustard. Now ask me one back. Mayo or relish? Relish. Uh, daytime or nighttime? Nighttime. Ask me one back. Moon or sun? Sun. Uh, baths or showers? Showers. Shower gels or soap? Shower gels. Uh, let me think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, back rubs or licks? Back rubs. See, then you can get a little spicy with it too. Yeah, so and, and then, then you know what yeah. they like. But that's like an easy one that, to just text someone back and forth on these apps. Mm -hmm. Now, we've played that game. We've gotten to know each other. It's been a couple days. When do we insinuate that we need to hang out? I'm tired of texting you. I'm messaging you. Now, when can I even ask like to talk to you on the phone? 
I honestly think it's also how much you guys have talked on the app. Okay. That's that's one. There's there's a couple that I, you know, I've t- we've talked but we'll go through, I'm going through now. It depends on how long we talk. So if you've gone like a whole 24 hours and you guys have been talking consistently, there is no reason why you have not asked her or him for a phone number. You should and you should be going and then from there having a phone conversation cuz I know sometimes the back and forth is great on text but if you have a phone conversation you can even make a decision from there whether or not to go on a date which i'm a huge proponent on by the way i going on a date just from texting someone on an app Mm -hmm. to me is a little scary and it's for a safety precaution you should always talk to the person on the phone absolutely and i'm sure they are who they say they are exactly because you never ever know so that's the other thing now if you've been talking back and forth for a couple days, three days. I go three days tops. Anything else after that, I call them a hanger on, that you're just going back and forth on the app. A, still would make me think you're not who you are. Yeah. You're not who you are. You are just playing with someone instead of actually wanting to see to someone really connect, yeah. and then what's your what's your um, malfunction that you haven't asked someone on a date yet? So maybe you're inexperienced, anything like that, but that doesn't matter. Maybe you're married. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> exactly. There could be a number of reasons. And, yeah. So from there, but if it, it, after three days you've been talking to someone and they haven't at least asked for your number, then you just, that's when it's totally fine to ghost, well, I think. What about women? Can we say, hey, I want to move this conversation to telephone or even FaceTime? I'm totally fine mind, with that. Like chatting with me. Like women can say the same thing. I mean, yeah. we just like Bumble, we have the ability to message first. Can't we ask for the number as well first? I just feel like we're in this age of, as women, we still want to be courted. We still want, you know, him to be man, hear me roar. But then we also are running meetings and, you know, running businesses. Like we can be bosses when it comes to, you know, getting us, you know, into the relationship as well. It just doesn't necessarily mean that we have to run the relationship. Yeah. And there's not, and by the way, we're in uh, this weird time, a very weird time, (laughs) weird time on so many levels. And I don't think it's wrong for a woman to say, Hey, can I get your phone number? Hey, would you, can I more so just get your phone number first? Cause we want you to call, but (laughs) And go from there. That's not a problem because even with Bumbo, the woman is the one who has to reach out. And I think that's why I love Bumble is because the woman has to reach out. But I think it's not that I think I know that it's okay for a woman to do that. And because she's doing that doesn't mean that she's asking you out, by the way. Right. It does not mean that she's asking you out. So, but for a woman to be able to say that, I think it's totally fine. So one thing that I tell men, especially when it comes to women, just like what you would ask, you know, for their number in person or, you know, in meeting, when it comes to making them feel a little bit more comfortable, offer, hey, I would love to chat with you. Here's my number. You give yes. the number. Then you say, do you mind if I call you sometime? What's yours? Yes. Then now you still have the ability to reach out to them. They have your number in case they want to reach out to you, but you've kind of like made it a little bit safe because mm-hmm. you made yourself vulnerable first by giving yours. And so if I know that you're interested in really chatting with me, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable and like, oh, this person takes initiative. Like yeah. they're giving me a piece. Now I'm going to give them a piece. And I think that FaceTime is actually, um, it makes people feel a little nervous because they're like, oh, what if my hair is not done? You know, what if I'm not looking my best? But FaceTiming someone before you actually go on the date too, may it ensure safety as well. Exactly. And if you're setting up a time, listen, women, you get, it's easy to run into your bathroom and like put a little blush and fix the hair. It's like <laughs> totally fine as long as you set a time up. But if he says five minutes, you still run into the bathroom and like fix yourself up. It's really for just here up. <laughs> so you guys talk on the phone. You guys maybe are chit chatting for a little bit or maybe you have been, you know, messaging back and forth. Yeah. You're both going to be in Santa Monica or Hollywood at the same time. Is it cool and does it matter which one of you guys say, hey, let's link up. Let's go hang out for a drink. I honestly don't think that that matters. I agree. We're, we're in this time. It doesn't matter who says go. Like, I, it just doesn't matter anymore. I think because I, I think men are more afraid nowadays to even ask because they don't know where it's going. And I'm totally fine with a woman asking. Totally fine with a woman asking. It also, I mean... 
I think that women still want to feel this feeling of being chased, but yes. I think men, you have to remember because they're so used to courting for 30, 40 years, however long, you know, this guy has been alive. He's experienced numerous rejection, 50,000 yes. times more than you have as a woman. So for him, he may be at a point in his life where, okay, this app is his last shot. You know, I'm just, I want to, you know, see, play it by ear first, see if she's really into me. And you have to also remember too, the average date, this is Los Angeles. I have numbers for every other state as well, but the average date in Los Angeles can be up to $150 yes. per date. So now that we have apps, we're dating more. Like people are more accessible. We can go link yes. up with you around the corner and have a drink really quick and still make brunch with you tomorrow. Like yes. it's very simple. So if we are still living in this time where a lot of men, you know, are still paying majority for the dates, then it gets expensive. And if you're a female that's comfortable and you're paying for yourself, great, it still gets expensive. Yeah. Like either way, money is coming out of our yeah, pockets per date. What did you say in LA? It was $250? It's almost $200. It's like yeah. 150 to 190 And so that's expensive. And so when it comes to, whether that's me paying for myself, you know, including gas, traffic, whatever, yeah you know, that's a lot of money for me to spend every single week hoping to find the one or hoping to find someone that I make this magical connection with. Yeah. So I always say, start off with coffee, start off with a oh. hike, start off with, you know, let's meet at the beach for a smoothie, like something that's a little bit more affordable so that yes. we're not spending all this money to get disappointed. Oh yeah, and especially on a first, uh, people are liking to call them meetups now. Yeah, meetups. They're not, they're not even dates anymore, which is totally fine. And then this, the second time you meet up will be a date if there is a second. But yeah. why would you want to spend money on somebody and spend hours with somebody if they're really not the person you want to be with? What happens when, because you just said spend hours, what happens when you get to that date, they don't look how their photo showed, they're not as interesting as you had hoped. They were a lot more witty on, you know, the, the messaging and they're not enjoying yourself. Do you say, excuse me, I would like to remove myself from this date or do you finish it off? <laughs> like, so, what do you do in that situation when you're like, oh my God, I can't stand to be here right now? Well, there's, there's two ways you could do this. Um, well, actually, or the third way, like my Southern mother would be like, well, they did take you out. But, <laughs> But no, it's basically find not a lie. I'm not about lying or fibbing, but you have to say, okay, maybe this isn't working out or have a plan, have make plans with your friends mm -hmm. and say, I have a date and I've done this before. I've made plans with my friends, but I told them I have a date and if it's going well, I'll text you and tell you I'm not coming. But it also gives me something in case it's not working out. Oh, I got to go meet my friends over at the hotel cafe because a friend of mine is playing tonight. Or if it is working so out. An exit strategy. It, yeah. Always have an exit strategy. Or like if it is working, I'll say, hey, I'm meeting my friends at the hotel cafe. You want to come along? A friend of mine is playing. <laughs> so you can do both ways. You can also be honest, but I feel people are so vulnerable you can be like, hey, this isn't working out. I got to go. I have, Or I have an early day. We all work. Yeah. So it's fine. It's not a lie. It's not a fib. You're just, I, I'm a, like I said, either tell the truth, say, listen, this just isn't for me. You seem like a right guy, but a nice guy, but you're not my guy. And I would appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I would appreciate the honesty. Yeah. Because also too, if you do have an engagement with your friend, yeah. I'm going to, oh, well, maybe I do want to come, you know, do you mind if I come? Or I'm going to think that there may be a follow-up. Like maybe I really thought we hit it off great. Yeah. We had this amazing connection. So I reach out to you tomorrow and you ghost me. Yes. So if, it, if you are able to be honest, because I think that we're not honest enough, let that person know you're not yeah. interested and the why. You know what? There's some things that you said tonight that let me know we're not compatible. I don't really appreciate your stance on politics or I don't really, you know, think that this is going to go anywhere based on, you know, what you believe um, compatibility or love to be. I don't know. Whatever issue it is or whatever that person said that rubbed you wrong or whatever gave you the notion that you're not going to see them again after that. I feel like we should be giving people constructive criticism on their dates. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm here for it. Like, let me learn from my mistake. Tell me what it is that I just said or did that rubbed you wrong. So that way I don't do it again to somebody else. Yeah, and and, and they're not calling their ex-girlfriends and asking why. So, or boyfriends and asking why, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? <laughs> you can just tell them right then and there because people do want to know. I mean, when people are looking for their mate, 
they're looking for the right mate. They're not looking for the mate who just wants to be there. And we've seen this in so many ways with people that they just stay in something just to stay in it yep. instead of being honest about how they really feel. And it, gosh, we've seen it with so many people. I'm sh- Your viewers have seen it with so many people. Oh, yeah. So I feel like the honesty does work. If some people can't handle honesty, well, that's them. That's not you. I'm going to ask you this because I... In, I invented this while I was, like it just came to me one day <laughs> while I was doing an interview for Latino TV. Okay. And while we were talking about constructive criticism and like being honest with people, mm-hmm. I had said there needs to be a dating app like that has Yelp reviews afterwards. After you go out on that date with a person, you write a Yelp review. Like this is what Dorinda did on the date. This is how I feel about it. This is why I'm going back out with her or this is why I'm not going out with her. <laughs> and you know, you use whatever, you know, your yeah. username actually like leaves the comment or whatever. But as a person who's going to go on a date with you, I can now read and see if I want to go out with you based on these Yelp reviews. Like, and it's not really Yelp, but it's like <laughs> re- dating reviews. Like what kind of dater you are? Like, oh really? He didn't tip, you know, he was rude to the waiter. Like, I want to know these things. Oh, well, that's a big thing. Um, that actually is not a bad idea. My fear is that nobody would go on there because no. <laughs> they, they don't would. want a bad date Yelp review. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, come on. I mean, we've all uh, done the Yelp thing and I've, I used to work at a place where people would get rewarded or punished on a Yelp review. So I, it, it's quite interesting how that would work. As much as I think, I like the idea. I actually think it's a great idea, I but I do it. think that what happens if they did have a great time, but the guy ghosted her, then she can go on and just went, blah, blah, blah. but now that, that makes the other thing. him accountable. Like yeah. don't ghost people then. And it was, yeah. I'm going to write that on your review. So yes, when somebody, so I do see people going on there with their feelings, getting hurt yeah. that, you know, the person didn't like them or, you know, I took her to a $200 meal and we only hung out once. It was a waste of my time, but really in the moment you really liked her. So, yeah. but I do think that, um, being able to hold people accountable for their behavior would be a good thing. Like, well, don't do anything you're ashamed of then. Exactly. And also here's the other thing about when, what you just said about someone spending, I spent $200 and, and nothing happened out of it. Well, you know what? You should have been looking at your learning something on that date. There you go. You're learning something about yourself. You're learning maybe that this is not a person you, this is not a type of person you want to be with, or just go back and look at the date because there's always something you can learn in everything that you do in life. Agreed. Yeah. If, if afterwards you reflect, if you go into the situation with like, okay, you know, let me think of the worst and the best outcome that could happen. Best we fall in love and run off into the sunset. Worst, I don't hear from this person again and we don't hit it off. Yes. But at least you learn something from it. You got something from the experience. What can I do better next time around? And don't be afraid to ask people what they thought about the date. I think that people are afraid to hear the truth and they're Mm -hmm. afraid to be embarrassed and scared of getting their feelings hurt. But after you hang out with someone or spend time with them, I feel like at the end of the night, ask them, how did you feel about this experience? I'm, I may or may not see you again. I want to know what we hit off, what were our highs and what were our lows. But I kid you not, people are too afraid to ask that. Oh, nobody really wants to hear the honesty about themselves. So even though you say you do, sometimes you, I mean, in most cases you don't. I'm one of those weird people that I actually do want to hear that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then I spend like the next week or two trying to fix it. But I... <laughs> But I wanted to hear it because we as people always are a work in progress. Mm-hmm. So, and it, what if I didn't agree with that person? Maybe they saw it one way and I didn't see it that way. And then that becomes another thing. But I'd rather know the truth. I'm not going to go home and sit in a corner and cry and drink box wine. Yeah. But I'm going to listen to it, take the critiques and go with it. Plus, I mean, being creative, we hear critiques all the time. All the time. All the time. So, <laughs> hence, while well, I'd be like, yeah, come on, tell but me. But it makes you more aware as well. So, you know, you know, 
your friends aren't able to tell you what kind of date you are. But if you ask the people who you're going out with, you know, what they felt about their experience with you, mm -hmm. it gives you more insight. You're now going to have more awareness. <laughs> and then that helps you too with your self-awareness. Like, hmm, you know what? I learned from this experience. Next time I can do, you know, this differently. I didn't realize that my time management, you know, and showing up on dates late all the time was something that bothered so many people. Instead of thinking, well, one day I'm just going to find someone who accepts me for being a uh, tardy, that's a lot harder than just fixing the issue. Yeah, Cause that's <laughs> an easy prompt. issue. <laughs> that's such an easy, we have a friend of ours and whenever we go somewhere and let's say it's, we gotta be somewhere at seven 30, we tell her seven o'clock. So we Are you know about me right now. No. I need that. Okay. <laughs> no. I was like, everyone does that to me too. <laughs> And she actually shows up on time. And then she'll be like, why is anybody? I'm, and I'm like, no. And we show up like five minutes later. She goes, oh, I was on time. And actually, technically, you weren't. We tell her afterwards. And she falls <laughs> for her all the time. But it's, it's something that can be fixed. And if you tell someone you're late all the time, guaranteed, if they are interested in you or interested in dating or finding love or anything like that, that is something that is fixable and they will work on it. Okay, and then I have another question because I know, you know, we always we got so many things when it comes to like just exercising this dating skill and I want you guys to really get good at it and I don't want you to be intimidated by modern technology and all the things, you know, that it offers us. But when it comes to someone telling you like head on in your messaging, uh, I'm on here because I'm looking for a real relationship or even putting that in your profile. I'm looking for a long-term relationship. Should that be something that you're upfront about and should you be messaging people that letting them know that this is my expectation? So here's the thing. And I, I looked at it again last night. I was with my, Andre is a big part of this uh, whole thing today. <laughs> <laughs> I was with Andre and he was telling me there is this dating app and it's um, for LGBTQ. And I wish we had this app. Okay. It shows you there's, it's like a, like a lever, I guess you could say. Uh -huh. And you can go cute means you're looking for a relationship. Cute and sexy means you don't, you're kind of looking for a relationship, but you're not quite sure. And you're putting your, you're in the foot in the water, uh -huh. your toe in the water. And then sexy is just basically for a good time like mm -hmm. for a hookup. I wish we had an app like that. To be honest, I, we need one like that. But since we don't have that right so now, we can just know who's looking for a good time. Who's looking for a good time. I always, here's my thing. I don't think that should be your first sentence. I think maybe you can put it in there and it shouldn't be whenever I see that, I feel like you're screaming that to the world. That I want a relationship. relationship. And I get it. We're on these apps, potentially looking for relationships, I would like to say. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're someone just looking for a good time, I think sometimes you should put that in your app instead just of making it a good time. That would yeah. be great. Yeah. Then find someone who's looking for just a good time too. Exactly. But if you're screaming, I'm looking for a relationship in these apps, you're going to even scare off the people who are putting their toe in the water, yeah. trying to figure out if they want one or not. So I have, if you want to put it in there, I think put something fun and witty, say something about yourself, all this stuff. And then if you want that to be maybe your last relationship and it's not, not, not last relationship, last sentence, uh -huh. I'm totally okay with that. But the way it has to be worded, I just have a whole hard time with people who Looking make that for quality connections. That is good. Like, yeah, that's better than looking for long-term marriage, you know? Looking yeah. For I mean, we have fixed a lot of, words like janitorial janitor is now custodial assistant right you know flight attendant is, is now a, stewardess uh, oh a stewardess now flight now attendant flight atten yes yeah so why don't fix those words fix those sentences so it does it's not so in your face and because as anything in this conversation we've been having People don't want things that are in your face because they're just going to ghost you or they're going to swipe left on you. And you can be totally good quality people. And I will be honest with you, you will know within the first meetup whether or not that's a person you want to be with in quality because they're going to let you know in some way, shape or form if they are the quality per person you want to be with. Well, I do agree with that as far as like the first initial meeting with them, yeah. you're going to know if this is a quality person or not. However, you know, pay attention to the flags, like the yeah. signs. If it's somebody who you don't feel good with, you don't enjoy yourself, then no, 
you probably don't want to go back out with him. But if it was decent, if you know that maybe your environment affected the situation or maybe that yeah. person was having a bad day or maybe, because sometimes we can be off or in certain moods yeah. and not put our best foot forward when we're dating. So Agreed. I am under the idea that we should give the person another chance. Like I do believe in two to three dates before you decide to write somebody off. I know that's a lot. However, I think that because we're in this like popcorn age of no. I have somebody else waiting for me that I can swipe on, I don't need to stay seated here very long. We are missing out on really getting to know people and make real connections when it comes to us uh, actually building relationships. Like we've lost the art of building. We were already bad at yeah. it to begin with and now it's become really bad because we're not investing anything at all. I agree. How about this? This is might be a little bit of a radical idea, but how about if you have a great meetup or a date with somebody, don't go home and start swiping on someone else. Like don't go, if you had a great time and you're with that person and you're like, maybe you want to see them again, why do you have to swipe anyone else? Give yourself like three or four days and see how you feel about that person. I, I know so many people that they'll go on a great date, but I it like becomes a thing where you just, I'm just going to start swiping again. Well, why would you do that if you had a great time with this person? Well, because some people would think I'm not committing to somebody yeah, who yeah. I just had one good time with. However, I do think that I understand that thought process because yeah. I do not believe that you should ever just jump into a committed relationship unless yeah, it's committed. Yeah, agreed. But I do think that you should allow yourself to enjoy the moment and process it. Yes. Process the experience. See if this person uh, is consistent. I think the problem with going home and instantly swiping mm. and looking for, you know, the next best high mm. is that it does become addictive and it turns into crack. Just like we have to have our Instagram, like, yeah. oh my gosh, if I don't swipe or I don't see what's on my timeline today, I didn't get to see, you know, anybody's social life. Like it, it becomes habitual. Oh yeah. It's a thing. I, did you, have you ever watched Master of None? Yes. Aziz Ansari? Oh, yeah, that yeah. episode was perfect in the whole, when he was doing the dating app thing. Yeah. He had a perfectly great time with this woman. Amazing time. Wanted to see her again. He goes home, leaves the date. Instead of thinking about the date, processing mm -hmm. the date, he's on his couch. Swipe, 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 swipe. So you, now you're already saying in your brain that eh, maybe she wasn't good enough. Yep. And boom, 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 trying to find better. Instead of trying to find better, because there might not be better, in, in that that could be your person, why not just take that little time and just digest it? Dating apps, when I, I, I kid you not, as a relationship coach and expert, mm -hmm. dating apps are the best thing to have yes. ever happened to my industry. And a lot of people <laughs> will say, oh my gosh, you know, it, but doesn't it, it, it makes people so much more accessible and like people don't know. People actually need us more now than ever, because yes. the more dates you go on, the more rejection you have, the more issues that become apparent, the harder it becomes to actually find a relationship. So like, yes, you may have this connection, yeah. but you still may have a hard time building interpersonal relationships. There's more to it than just swiping. And so when people are confronted with this technology of having access to a billion people now and you yes. still can't find someone it really makes you think a lot harder what you're doing wrong yeah because is it really the dating app or is it yeah, yeah. are you the common denominator <laughs> <laughs> and oftentimes more than not it, it, you are yeah and so it, it gives us one an opportunity to be able to like help them but two it allows us to coach you through the process you get coaching on everything else in life when it comes to your finances when it comes to education why not when it comes to the way that you meet people and you interact with them because relationship building really is a skill set. It's why oh, there's yeah. people who have a lot of great, healthy relationships and people who have none. It is something that, you know, and I tell Dr. Ali this all the time when she's in here with me, it is something that our parents should have taught us a long time ago. Agreed. But dating now is back in Robin's 31 flavors, Dorinda. So <laughs> now that I got all these options and to choose from, how do I choose? Like, that's really what it has become. We won't choose our favorite flavor anymore. No, because, you know, that Jamoka Almond Fudge was good on Friday, but that mint chocolate <laughs> chip, hey, Monday. But I mean, like, 
Oh my gosh. You guys, you have to utilize our services. We go in and really like take over your life. Dorinda is so hands on when it comes to your profiles, your photos. She's redoing your bio. She's helping you present the best version of yourself. She's um, going to parks with you, taking these photos. Like we're swapping, we're over here, like working. And when I'm coaching you, I also yeah. know additional information that you forget about the amazing things about yourself to tell her to put in those profiles. Like you really want to utilize our services. I'm telling you, come to the spicy life and use uh, my coaching, but also Dorinda's services from Next Connection because we're a dynamic duo when it comes to how we really help your life and transform your dating life. Because you may be somebody who's not even getting dates right now because your profiles aren't up to par or you're not presenting the best version of yourself. Yeah, and that's and that's the other. That's why I started doing this. I I like helping people, and I actually fell into this. And I tell you this story all yep. the time. Um, Let everybody know. I it started with my guy friends. It wasn't even my girlfriends. My guy friends. Um, my one guy friend said, "Oh, something about his profile." I was like, "Let me see." Da, da, da. And it turned into this whole thing. And he was the guy who had the chest selfie with no face mm. at the gym. Uh, pictures of him with a bunch of people. His other pictures were blurry of his face. So anyway, I went in and I fixed it. He came back to me and he said within 24 hours, it was such a change. Like it is instant. Then I had another guy friend, same thing, did it with him. He came back and goes, I can't believe this. And it came in about the fifth person, fifth guy friend. And they're like, this is a business. Because th I would have never thought to even put this picture up. Yeah. I thought that this picture was like a non-picture. I was like, no. Women want to see certain things. Oh, absolutely. And what a man thinks a woman wants to see, they are so far off. On <laughs> they are so far off. And I mean that in the nicest of ways. They don't get it. They don't no. get it. And when someone has a great profile, when a guy has a great profile, I let them know because that is, at a, I, used, I used to work at Universal and I, and I would see one of the guys that I knew on the apps. Yeah. He was always on the apps. And, but I told him, I went up to him, I was like, listen, I saw you on Bumble. And he like gave me this, like, I'm like, no, what I want to tell you is <laughs> you did a great job. A and this, great profile. Yeah, great profile, great bio, great profile, great everything. And, but he took the, and he, then he sat down with me and took, took the time to talk to me to about do, it. To do it seriously. Yeah. Yes. And so it's something that you do have to think about, but come and see us. We'll take care of what you don't want to take care of. Dorinda, we have to wrap up, but you have to yeah. let everybody know where to find you at. Oh, okay. So you can find me um, on Instagram at Next Connection, which is NXT Connection. And my website is www.nxtconnection.com. And yeah. And you can also uh, reach out to us at The Spicy Life if you want to get a hold of us. Um, you can uh, catch us uh, working on the show pretty soon. We're just going to yes. put that out there in the universe. <laughs> but I'll bring, I'll bring Dorinda on um, a lot more often. But you can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Madi or at The Spicy Life. And definitely reach out to us because uh, we want to transform your lives. And Dorinda, like I said, is an asset. And your online profile should be as well when it comes to your dating tools. There you have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.